Hey everyone, today I'm talking about a new template that I've just released. It's my prepaid expenses template 2025 version. This is an updated version over my previous prepaid expenses template. With this template, it's easier to track not just a few items, but dozens of them. You can also track your prepaids for several years. It's easy to expand the template to accommodate more years or items, so it can be a single file to track all of your prepaids. And there's no need to just have one for each year. So let's go over how it works. There are just a few fields where you need to enter in any values. And that's the prepaid that you want to track here in column A. So we've got car insurance, property tax, subscription. We've got a starting prepaid balance. And then the duration. So this is the number of periods that you're going to amortize it over. And the first period that you're going to start the amortization in. And this column in column E, this, is a, this contains formulas. So this is automatically calculated based on your input. So you don't want to override this because if you do so, that'll remove the formulas that are in there. Down below, you can also enter your actual GL balance. So this is used to compare your calculated balance versus the actual to determine if there's any sort of variance. In this example, I've got a $1,000 difference between my actual and my calculated balance based on these inputs here. And so once you enter your inputs, everything else is going to be automatically calculated. So in this example, I've got car insurance and it's starting in, in the first period. So the first period is going to be this first value here. So I've entered January 2025. You can adjust this to a different period, different, um, different month. That's going to be your period one. This is period two, period three, and so on. I've got the period numbers hidden in row two. So if you wanted to expand this, you could just copy the formulas over across. But that's where that information is. So for this example, you know, car insurance, 11 periods. So it's going to continue amortizing until we get to period 11 in November. So you can see now it zeroes out in the, in the 12th period. So for the property tax, that starts in the fifth period. So if we go to January, that's the first period, second period, third, fourth, fifth period. So that's where it starts. So this is where we can set up exactly where we want it to start. And then we put in the duration and the template will take care of the rest. And by default, I've set it so it has, so it goes up to five years. But as you can see, because it's going horizontally, it's easy to expand this out if we needed to, if you wanted to add more years. It's easy just to copy the formulas across and you can easily do that. Same with if you wanted to add items, obviously we can just insert rows and make sure we copy the formulas down. But it's a fairly straightforward process to add as many items as you want. And this is why I say you could potentially use this for years and have this to be your one sheet to track all of your prepaids without having to have multiple years. But obviously you can do so if you wanted to. Now, obviously, a big part of prepaids is tracking and reconciling them. So we've got the total period amortized cost. So this is basically just the summation of what we've amortized for that period. We've also got a year to date total. And this is a running total. As you can see, it's basically summing up these values since the start of the year. Now, it does reset after period 12. So the assumption that I'm making is you're starting at the beginning of your fiscal year or the calendar year. So you'll want to start in the first period of your fiscal year or your or your calendar years to make sure that these year to date calculations are accurate. So here it's going to reset. This is period one. And so it's going to start over again and track that year to date uh, year to date balance. So if there's no change, you can easily go at the end of the year to see what what that balance was, as opposed to having to add everything up manually. Now, if you're doing this mid year and you know, you're not amortizing anything until you know, May, you can still use the starting period um, being your first uh, period of the year, the first month of the year, and just setting that first period till later in the year. That way you can ensure that these year to date calculations are still going to be correct because the idea is you want them to ideally reset after period 12 and once you're into a new year. But obviously if you set it, if, if I set my start date to you know May 2025, just because that's my first uh, first amortization period, that's gonna throw off that calculation. So I'd suggest set, setting this to the to the first period of your of your fiscal year, or if you go by calendar year, set it to the calendar year, and then just adjust your starting point accordingly to make sure that it's th that the values are in the right month. And so that's going to ensure that this year to date calculation is correct. And of course, we've got our calculated balance. So this is going to factor in what we've amortized less our and deduct that from our starting balance. And again, we can input our um, GL balance in here. So if I have my amounts here, 
you know, I can enter that in and, and see what my difference is and if I have any kind of variance based on these calculations. So if you do want to check out this template and, and test it out yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for this video. So feel free to test it out. Give me any feedback, any comments or suggestions on how to improve it. But if you like this template and if you like this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching.